How is it that those who worship the Ganga can pollute it so much? I mean, why, why are we in this mess, literal and figurative, to begin with? Good question. So there's a couple of, of points. The first and most important one, I'll share with you how I learned it. I have been very blessed to be here now for 21 years. I'm originally from America, from California. And when I came, one of the things that for me was so confusing is you'd read and you'd hear Ganga is holy, Ganga is the mother, we worship her. And you'd see people standing on her banks with a polythene bag full of beautiful flower malas, like what you're wearing. And they would stand on her banks and they would chant prayers and you could see the tears of faith and love pour down their eyes and they would chant prayers to her. And then they would offer the flowers to her, but they would offer the flowers in the plastic bag. And to me, this was an incredible irony because the, the easy answer that people would give is just, oh, well, people don't care. They're apathetic, they're indifferent, they don't really worship her, they only say they worship her, it's just lip service. You know, I mean, there were so many explanations that I had heard. But those explanations did not actually go in concert with what I was witnessing. What I was witnessing was anything but apathy, anything but indifference. I mean, when you see the love with which people pray to her, this is not apathy. And so many people, poorest of the poor people, come to Ganga from across the country. God knows how many days it takes them to get here. I mean, we may think, oh, I'll just book a flight from one end of the country to another end. Let's, you know, go to Rishikesh. But if you're really poor, some of your journey is going to be by bus. Some might be auto rickshaw. Some might be bicycle. Some might be the back of a sugar cane cart. Some could be in some other cart, you know, pulled by a bullock. Some could be walking with your bags on your head. And you'd see people who had spent God knows how many days, the rupees that they had spent God knows how long accumulating to fund their trip, would come here, would buy these flowers, and then would offer them like that. And I'm a scientist by academic training and also much by heart and by mind still. And it didn't work with my scientific mind. I would say, no, if people are apathetic, if they're indifferent, if they don't care, they'd stay home. They'd go to the movies. They'd eat pizza. They would do something else with the money they had accumulated rather than travel thousands of miles to come here. Or if they got here, they'd use their money and they'd buy ice cream rather than flowers for Ganga. So it's not apathy, it's not indifference. And what we realized is, it's simply a semantic issue, actually. And an issue of separating content and form. Without going into the, the whole details of the history, Ganga is a goddess. Prior to there ever being a river, Ganga was a goddess living in heaven who was beseeched by generations to flow onto earth in the form of a river for a very specific purpose of bringing liberation to the sons of King Sagar. That part of the story are not important here. But what is important is that before she was H2O, she was goddess. The H2O is simply the form she took for that task, you could say, of washing over 
the ashes of these sons in order to bring them liberation. So the water is her form. It's not her essence. And if you talk to people who are throwing the plastic bag that the mala is in, or you go, you know, there's a motor boat that goes across Ganga. It's not running this time of year because the water is too high. But usually, you can go right across Ganga by boat. And you would see people with a box of incense sticks. Just they're leaving Rishikesh. They're so sad to be leaving. And they've got a box of incense, and they're performing arti like what we just did, but with the incense sticks to Ganga from the boat as the boat is pulling them across the river. And then they'll take the whole cardboard box that the incense came in and throw it overboard. And it was the same situation of you cannot write this off as lack of caring. Clearly they care. And when you talk to them and you say something like, you really shouldn't pollute Ganga. What you get is something really interesting. In their mind, the concept that Ganga could be polluted, that is sacrilege. The plastic bag is not sacrilege. The cardboard box is not sacrilege. Sacrilege is the assumption that a plastic bag or a cardboard box could pollute Ganga because she's the goddess. And she washes away lifetimes of sins. I mean, people come to bathe in Ganga to wash away lifetimes of sins. What do you mean a plastic bag pollutes her? It's nothing compared to the fact that I was a murderer in my past life. I mean, if she can handle that, and I can, I can emerge from Ganga pure and clean, what's a cardboard box got on her? What's a plastic bag got on her? It's nothing. And so what we realized was, semantically, the campaign had to change. You could not talk about polluting Ganga. You have to begin by the assumption, Ganga is unpollutable, the goddess. The essence of Ganga is unpollutable, untaintable, undefilable. Much in the same way that if you took your mother for an evening walk, and on that evening walk, she slipped and she fell into a mud puddle. Or worse, she fell in the sewer. Or somebody dumped a trash bag full of waste out their window onto her head as she was walking down the street. She wouldn't be any less your mother. Her power to bless you wouldn't be impacted in any way by the fact that she fell in the sewer. You wouldn't say, oh God, Ma, you know, I was really looking forward to your blessings tonight. Unfortunately, now you've become defiled. We would understand intuitively, it's just, yeah, her clothes are dirty. Take her home, give her a bath, throw her clothes in the wash, but mom is mom. Her blessings are just as potent. Her presence is just as potent. And this is where we've had to separate the semantics, the content from form. So Ganga is unpollutable, undefilable, and yet the 500 million of our sisters and brothers who live on her banks that I mentioned in the Arati, well, they are depending on the molecules of H2O. They're actually depending on form, not content. They're not looking to Ganga for liberation. They're looking to Ganga for water to drink. They're looking to Ganga for water to irrigate their fields. And so when you can talk to people and say, yeah, Ganga herself is undefilable, but you know that plastic bag, downriver it's going to wash up. Some cow's going to eat it. That cow's going to suffocate and get sick and die. Or you know that plastic bag, a fish is gonna swim into it, and when the fish swims into it, it sucks against the fish, and the fish can't open her gills and breathe. So the fish suffocates and dies. And then people go, oh. And lo and behold, 
they don't put the plastic bag in Ganga because they got it. But they got it with a different semantics. It cannot be a teaching that is rooted in the idea that the people who love her are defiling her due to their apathy or due to their indifference or due to anything like that. And that's, that's how we've been working. So what we realize is we're praying to essence. And yet, lastly, we're now in a place where we need to pray to form also. And this is actually a lot of what we've been doing is this, this bridging of content and form. Content is divine, yes, but form is also divine. Water, regardless of whether it's Ganga, the goddess-infused water, or whether it's Lake Michigan, or the Mississippi, or the Colorado River, or the Thames, or the Danube. I mean, it doesn't matter what, what body of water. They're actually all sacred because water gives life. And anything that gives life, regardless of whether it also gives liberation and also washes away our lifetimes of sin, is also holy. And so we're looking to bridge that content and form, but but this is where you see that, that paradox. Don't, don't think it's that they don't care. They do care, they just don't understand. And this is where education is so important.